Hi, you suck at mixing, and I'm underbelly. As we just saw, order matters. But no order is more important than the one in which you place your EQ and compressor. In today's lesson, we're going to learn which order will give you the sound that you want. Let's get started. Okay, so check it. Here we have yet another beautiful shit song. Let's take a listen. Okay, let's focus on Derek for a minute. Now, if we're following Uncle Joe's conventional wisdom, we want to EQ before we compress. So that way, we can establish the tone of the sound first and then worrying about the dynamics later on. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and shave off some of Derek's leg hairs here. Take out some of that low end. Maybe also tame the high end as well and make it a little less harsh. Let's hear that in the mix. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with those EQ settings. Let's move on to my compressor here. I'm gonna want a slow attack and a fast release. Slow attack so that the compressor doesn't clamp down on the transients at the beginning of each kick and snare, and a fast release so that it doesn't stay down after the kick and snare has passed. And let's go ahead and turn down the ratio so that the compression is a little bit more gentle. Okay, Derek's a fragile boy. Let's go ahead and lower that threshold. Oh, wowzers. Okay, so we're really starting to see that needle jump up and down. Let's go ahead and turn up the makeup. Oh, wowzers. Now oh, Derek's really punching through the mix, but here's the thing. He has weak legs, so as a result, the kick isn't quite as prominent as I want it to be. So let's go ahead and boost that on the EQ. Oh, shit. Okay, do you see what's happening here? Now that I've boosted the kick over on my EQ, whenever it hits, the compressor has to work really hard to push it back down. And as a result, all my carefully dialed in compression settings need readjustment. And that's not very fun. So that's why I would recommend to have the EQ on after the compressor so that once we dial in our compression settings, we're comfortable just leaving them there. And then we can shape the tone after we've established our dynamics. So here, I can do whatever I want with that delicious kick, and my compressor will act exactly the same. Wowzers. Now this isn't always the best approach for every sound. For example, my beautiful voice. Deadly, deadly. Deadly, deadly. Ah, deadly, deadly. Deadly, 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 deadly. Okay, here's the thing. Let's go ahead and listen to that again. Deadly, deadly. Oh, no. All right, so um, if we place an EQ on that sound, it will become no less awful, but here's the thing. Here's what we can see over on the left side of that EQ. As we're seeing, there's a fair amount of low end and rumble going on over in the lower frequency spectrum of the EQ here. Now let's just go ahead and listen to that on its own. So that's all just shit that isn't really a part of my voice. It's just my breath hitting the mic or me bumping up against it. So as a result, we kind of want to just remove that as soon as possible so that the compressor that we place on after isn't thrown off by signal that isn't really part of the sound that we want to compress. So in this situation, when there's a fair amount of signal that isn't a part of the sound and we want to get rid of it first before we start compressing. Diddly, diddly. Oh, wowzers. Oh boy. Okay, so excuse me, I'm gonna have to go clean out the blood in my ears. Okay, so check it. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit the subscribe button or 
Join my Discord, where you can discuss mixed down tips and share your mixes with thousands of other producers from around the world. You can join by clicking on the link in the video description below. I'm Underbelly. Have a great day.